It's a condition that by some estimates affects 75% of the population, a debilitating condition that often begins in early life and by adulthood becomes defining. Its causes vary, but symptoms are unmistakable. The psychologists call it glossophobia, the fear of public speaking. But what if this condition is combined with a disorder that in interrupts the normal flow of speech? Stuttering. What if you're the President of the United States and that childhood stutter returns in some embarrassing way during a major speech or a debate? What then? Today on State of Independence, whether your knees knock and palms sweat when the spotlight is on and the microphone is live, or you began life with a stutter, I know you'll be encouraged by today's conversation. If you watch the movie The King's Speech, you know what I'm talking about. In the opening scene, King George VI, the father of Queen Elizabeth, steps before a full stadium for a national radio broadcast on the BBC. The engineer signals that it's fine and time for the king to speak. Seconds go by. Silence. The audience leans in to hear the words of their monarch. Seconds more. Silence. Finally, the words tumble out haltingly, like a clogged machine gun sputtering to life. But King George VI wasn't alone. Throughout history, many great women and men suffered from a crippling stutter that became fodder for ugly playground taunts, abuse, and so-called treatments that amounted to nothing more than shaming. Our next guest knows something about that struggle, and God's given him a sensitivity to those facing similar challenges. But before we meet him, Watch this. Imagine if you were the narrator of this video. But for every word you had to pronounce, there was fear that a letter or a sound could make you stutter. And there are an estimated 3 million people in the United States who stutter. Worldwide, that number is a staggering 70 million. And it affects males four times more than females. Throughout history, a number of famous individuals faced a handicap that could have been debilitating but they went on to accomplish great things in life. Now let's go way, way back to burning bushes and stone tablets. Moses, one of the most important religious leaders of all time. He was a stutterer. Then there's Aristotle. Now scholars have known that he had a speech defect even while being the great ancient Greek philosopher. Perhaps the most famous stutterer, thanks to the 2010 movie is King's Speech, is King George VI. Now, he overcame his unruly tongue to lead England and give important speeches during the war with Germany. But enough with old wise men. A stuttering affects the most beautiful in the world. I mean, Marilyn Monroe, with her breathy, sexy voice, probably used slow and deliberate speaking to help avoid stuttering. The book Famous Stutterers profiles these four plus eight other well-known people who accomplished great things despite their impediment. The persistence and courage these famous people displayed tells us that there are ways we too can survive and achieve despite our own serious difficulties. Dr. Gerald R. McDermott, he calls himself Jerry, has lived an extraordinary professional life as a school principal, college professor, author, pastor, and prolific author. Each of these assignments comes with the challenge to speak, often before large audiences, but not everyone who hears Dr. McDermott is aware that much of his early life was defined by a stutter. With determination, he faced his fears, and God has used him in remarkable ways to serve others, not just those with the same life challenge. A few years ago, he released a wonderful book, Famous Stutterers, 12 Inspiring People Who Achieved Great Things While Struggling with an Impediment. Jerry, welcome to State of Independence. Well, thank you, Joe. It's my great privilege to be here. You know, this is a wonderful thing. I, I know there are lots of people watching, uh, many of whom have maybe had the challenge, uh, had to deal with this impediment, and others still who, who uh, may have overcome it. Um, uh, but, but, but tell me what it was like for you as a kid. I mean, did, did people tease you? What, what was it like for you, and, and how did you overcome it? Oh, it was agonizing at times. Uh, yes, kids teased. Um, stutterers know uh, the most empirical dogma of Christian theology, which, which is that human beings are sinners. 
yeah. and and the kids are not always kind. In fact, uh, oftentimes we'll take advantage of any kind of disability and mock the person with the disability. And that's what stuttering is. Stuttering is a disability. So yeah, school school was really really tough for me when when I would be called on by the teacher uh, uh, in class, and particularly I remember in high school I went to a Jesuit high school in New York City, and uh, I chose the Greek track as opposed to the modern language track because like because I couldn't talk, and the science track because I didn't have good science training in junior high school. So I chose the Greek text, the Greek track, ancient Greek, because it was the dead language that I wouldn't have to speak so much. <laughs> but it was agony. I remember in French class, I, you know, I had to take two years of French. And the teacher would always go up and down the rows uh, for recitation. And when they came to McDermott, everyone would sigh and say, oh, there's McDermott again. He can't get his words out. We're going to have to wait and wait until his, he can get his lips and tongue to cooperate. Mm. Uh, it was humiliating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, so, so, um, so then what was it that led you to seminary? I mean, you've had this in- extraordinary uh, professional life that has put you in front of people. I mean, as a principal, as a professor, um, you know, you're, you're in the ministry, you're an author, you have to give lectures. Um, so here it is. You know, a kid who grows up with this challenge, with this impediment, ends up becoming this marvelous person who is in front of people all the time speaking. Well, um, I didn't like to speak, and I also like to speak. It, it's a strange uh, combination. You know, I'm very outgoing, and I like people. And some, and um, you know, when I feel I have something to say, I want to say it, um, even though there's something inside of me that says, Jerry, watch out, you're going to get in big trouble. Um, And I thought I was doing pretty well uh, when I got my first teaching job after my PhD. Um, I I was teaching at Roanoke College down in southwest Virginia. And it was the second year, and this gentlemanly older professor stopped in my office and said, you know, Jerry, there's a world-famous stuttering therapy center right here in our town. And my first thought was, why are you telling me about this? <laughs> I, you know, I was in denial, uh, uh, as many stutterers are from time to time when things are not going too badly. So uh, this was Holland's Communications Research Institute 30 years ago, which still I think is the best stuttering you know, therapy in the world, uh, Arab sheikhs send their sons there. Uh, people come from across the world. And so when, when you first go in, they give you an intake uh, and, and they videotape you. And I came home that night and I told my wife, I said, you know, I think they're going to conclude that I don't need this. <laughs> well, then at the end of the three weeks, and it's 12 hours a day, 12 hours a day, they teach you how to breathe and move these muscles all over again. Uh, at the end of the three weeks, I watched the videotape of my opening uh, uh, intake interview on the first day, and I was stuttering on one out of every five words, Joe, wow. 20 percent, 20 percent of my words. And I was terrible. <laughs> but at, at the end of the three weeks, I was a whole new man. And that changed my career so that I've been speaking on TV. So I, you know, I lecture, I've, you know, I've lectured on six continents. Uh, I do interviews like this all the time that I never could have done before this stuttering therapy back 30 years ago at the Holland's Communications Research Institute. You see, I'm still a stutterer. <laughs> I, I have to uh, remember what I was taught in those three weeks of 12 hours a day. Wow, wow. Well, that's amazing. I mean, you can't tell. And uh, I know you're certainly, I know there are people watching right now who uh, may have the same challenge that, uh, that you had as a kid, and they may stutter, and they're watching you and listening to you, and they are just amazed. They are, they are, you, you are a marvel to them. Um, you were actually in pretty good company. I mean, uh, Moses, I mean, I, I, all these people that, that we self-identify as Christians, uh, and we, we supposedly read the, both the Old and the New Testament, but many people don't remember the fact that Moses was a stutterer. 
Yes, in Exodus 4, the Hebrew text says uh, he was um, heavy of speech and heavy of tongue. That's literally what the Hebrew is. Uh, and, you know, he clearly had a major speech defect. And I make an argument in the first chapter of the book that this was a stutter. And I read the uh, rabbis over the centuries, and, and the majority of the rabbis um, did agree he was a stutterer. Um, stutterers, as many people observe, don't stutter when they sing. And, and, and there's a physical... Uh. And Moses... Why is, why is that? Do, you, do we know why they don't study when they sing? Yes, it's because um, stuttering is neurophysiological. It's not emotional. And um, stutterers tend to stutter when they put too much pressure on... When, when, when they stop a sound and try to restart a new sound without enough... Um, air, uh, typically stutterers don't breathe the rest the way the rest of the population breathes. They run out of air and they put too much pressure uh, um, too abruptly instead of a gentle onset like the rest of the population. But in singing, you naturally go from one sound to another without stopping right. and having to start again. And Moses, um, rather than giving speeches, he would sing. So at the end of uh, Deuteronomy is Moses' song. Hmm. And that's another clue, one of many clues in the biblical text that, that Moses was a stutterer. Wow. And, and didn't he have to rely on his brother to be his spokesman as well? Yes, yes. And, and even though God said, look, I'll speak through your brother Aaron, Moses still said, no, I don't want to do it. And, and it's... And it's one, one of only two times in Torah, the Pentateuch, uh, you, know, you know, the story of Israel, the first five books of the Bible, where God gets angry at Moses. He says, look, who do you think makes man's mouth? Who uh, uh, gives men disabilities? Don't you think it is I? I will be with your mouth. Trust me. But Moses doesn't trust him. Uh, you know, contrary to what the movie The Ten Commandments, Cecil B. DeMille's movie of uh, many, many decades ago, um, Moses doesn't trust God. God gets angry at him and then starts to speak through Aaron instead. Wow. Well, you know, th this is a, a great question because, uh, you know, none of us, we don't make ourselves, do we? I mean, we, we come into this world as we are and uh, we don't have any say over what color we are or uh, what ethnicity or, or, or the parents to whom we're born, a, a, nor the abilities or disabilities that we may, we may come into this world with. And um, do you see uh, stuttering as, a, as a, a blessing or a curse? Some people would say, you know, why, why was this given to me? Why was I cursed to have this impediment? Uh, do you see it as a blessing or as a, as a, as a curse? Or, or how do you see it? Joe, for many years, particularly when I was young, uh, as a teenager and in my 20s, I saw it as a curse. So, and, and I was a believer, and I prayed, God, take this away from me. Why Why do you, you know, I've got all these thoughts in my brain. I can't get them out. Why don't you heal me? And I had people uh, lay hands on me and, and uh, pray for healing and cast demons of stuttering out of me. Well, then I went to Hollands when I was 37, 38 years old. Wow. Uh, so fairly late in my life, uh, although now I'm 68, so, so that was, you know, 30 years you're ago. You're a young man. You're a young man. But now, Joe, I look back, and thank you. You're, you're, you uh, look far, far, far younger than I think your age is. Um, now, now I look back, Joe, and, and I see it as a blessing because stuttering, dealing with this disability, this fear this constant anxiety, this um, uh, shame, you know, stutterers are full of shame, uh, taught, has taught me all sorts of lessons about life and God and, and living in God and calling upon him for his help that I never would have learned without stuttering. So um, I have to say that if I had a choice, um, I, I, I would say 
Um, I'll take it again, Father, because of all that you have made me because uh, through it and because of it. Wow, that, what a blessing. What a blessing. I mean, it's amazing how God is able to use all of us, you know, uh, as we are, you know, with whatever he's given us to bear. And he's able to use us. He's able to use uh, our, our talents and even the things that we see as our disabilities for his glory and purpose. And uh, boy, God has, has used you and you've been a blessing to so many people over the course of your career. So I, I just I thank God for that and for how he's used you already and for hopefully how, it, how what you've just said impacts the people who are watching uh, this program, uh, uh, some of whom may have the same challenge, the same stuttering challenge. Uh, there are some other famous people who have, who have had stuttering issues. Uh, of course, uh, the, the most famous person today that we know that had a stuttering challenge was is Joe Biden, the President of the United States. And, uh, and I think uh, you, you've talked about that. I mean, whether you share his political views or not, um, you certainly talked about the, the stuttering side uh, and, and how he's overcome it. And, and there was a beautiful story of, 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 of Joe Biden um, uh, uh, encouraging a young boy who had a stuttering problem. And what, what happened with that? Well, you know, um, President Biden just told him essentially, look, I've stuttered. Uh, I'm the president of the United States and I still deal with this. Uh, hang in there. Don't give up. Don't think that you're a bad person or less of a person. And, and you know, teenage boys and as the clip said that we just saw, uh, um, um, uh, you know, stuttering, uh, uh, well, 80% of stutterers are boys, um, can feel terrible about themselves because of their stuttering, as I did as a teenager. And so I'm sure it was, a, well, this boy said it was a huge encouragement to him to hear from the president that, yes, I too stutter, hang in there and uh, you can learn how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I just was uh, so hardened by that because in this uh, um, very challenging political environment in which we live, um, people are quick to use whatever they perceive as a weakness against you uh, and, then, and then try to define you by that weakness. And, uh, and this has been a challenge for the President of the United States and yet and still it's it's not a weakness, he's used it as a strength, which I, I think uh, he's used it to help other, other people. And clearly he's overcome the challenge uh, to become president of the United States. And, uh, and then he's used his impediment to, to help other people, to encourage other people, which is I think so wonderful. Just as you've done, you, you, you're doing the same thing. I mean, you, in this show today, but also by your life, by your career, as a, as a principal, as a professor, you know, in your ministry, as a prolific author, uh, and somebody who lectures uh, all over the world, uh, you've encouraged countless numbers of people um, just by virtue of, of, of your, your, your courage and your capacity to overcome and, uh, and, and the love you have in your heart uh, for other people, which shows by how you present yourself and by how you talk and by what you say and by what you do. Uh, I am so heartened by your book because your book and the way you wrote it demonstrates really the, the heart of Christ, uh, which, is, uh, which is so sweet and, and so kind. And, and I, I think that that comes out clearly uh, in your words. Uh, we're gonna take a break, but uh, when we come back, um, I, I wanna get practical and, and ask Dr. McDermott or Jerry about the advice he gives to those who might be nervous about an upcoming speaking engagement, because that might be you. Stay with us. Learn more about Joe Watkins and the mission of this program at joewatkins.net. And tell Joe what you thought about today's program in the comment box. In Dr. Jerry McDermott's career, he's advised plenty of aspiring pastors and leaders about how to overcome the fears and anxieties of public speaking. But Jerry, I want to ask you to speak with someone watching uh, who may have recently been asked to deliver a, a eulogy or a best man toast. Maybe they've been asked to lead a Sunday school class or lead a Bible study or, or pray at a public event, and they're scared to death. Where do you begin? How do you help someone overcome the fear of, of, of saying things aloud? Well, the first thing I would say is that you're, you're not alone. Most people are terrified of speaking in public. In fact, 
many Americans, many people in this world, would rather go to the dentist and get drilled on without <laughs> Novocaine than, than, than give a public speech. The second thing is the greatest um, orator, see, I'm still a setter, the greatest uh, orator in the world, one, one of the greatest orators in the world, Winston Churchill, had a complicated series of speech defects, and one of them was definitely stuttering, and I have a chapter on Churchill in the book, Famous Stutterers. And early in Churchill's uh, career, he gave a speech in Parliament, and he lost his train of thought, partly because of his speech defect. And he had to sit down. He was deeply, deeply humiliated. And after that, he always made it a practice to practice, practice, practice before any speech. And he would practice in the bathtub. And so, and, and give his speeches in a sing-song manner while he was taking a bath. <laughs> So, you know, I don't recommend that particular method of practicing, but I do, you know, recommend as someone who, who has lived with anxiety about public speaking all of his life, much less now because of the breakthrough I achieved through this, through Hollands. But nevertheless, practice, practice, practice. Um, and, you know, realize you're going to make mistakes. It's okay. Um, every public speaker make, 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 uh, you know, makes a mistake. If you look at President Biden today, you know, many of his critics say his, uh, he shows evidence of dementia. I don't think that's what it is. Uh, I know as a stutterer, um, the reason why he stops and pauses and sometimes ch uh, uh, changes the subject or moves in another direction in the middle of a paragraph uh, as we would put it, is because he's searching for a word he knows he can pronounce and the word he was thinking of, he, he knows ahead of time he can't pronounce. Uh, this is the famous stuttering method of substitution. All stutterers are always searching for, uh, for substitute words that, uh, and they're never quite as good as the original word. Um, so um, don't worry about making mistakes, practice, 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 and ask God to help you. Amen. Amen to that. Should, should a person practice in front of a mirror? Should you look in the mirror and, and see what you look like? Um, I don't recommend that. That makes you too self-conscious, I think. Just practice, 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 so that even if you lose your notes, now, now, I, now I bring an outline or the, the, the full speech up ahead of me, but even if you lose your notes, just um, um, so you know what you're going to say, uh, and you've gone over it many times before you get up there to speak. Yeah. And then at least you won't have the anxiety of losing your thought. Uh, e even if you stutter a bit, uh, at least you'll know what you want to say and you'll find a way to say it. It, it. Does practicing relieve the anxiety? Does it make it so that you aren't n so nervous before you stand up? Are there any tricks for people before they get ready to give a speech that might help them not be as nervous perhaps? Yes, yes, um, uh, yes, the practice helps reduce the nervousness. Second, speak slowly. Far too many people, uh, and if you ever go to church and listen to people reading the Bible, uh, you know, uh, uh, laymen and laywomen, they typically read far too quickly. Uh, don't give in to the temptation of, of talking as fast as you can to get it over with. Um, because you're nervous. No, slow down. The smartest people speak the most slowly. Always remember that. Speak very, very slowly. And if you have any stuttering problem, speaking slowly and not trying to speak after you've lost your breath, take another breath and then start the next sentence. That will help you to avoid stuttering. Excellent, excellent. Dr. Jerry McDermott's book is still available online and it's called Famous Stutterers, 12 Inspiring People Who Achieved Great Things While Struggling with an Impediment. I find Jerry and his, his story to be such, a, such an inspiration. Uh, Jerry, thank you so much for being with us in State of Independence. You're welcome. Thanks for having me on, Joe. Uh, great, great. I'll be back with Jeff Coleman and Closing Thoughts. Share what you've learned on today's program by first connecting with Joe directly on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 
Get started at joewatkins.net. So now let's talk to our great producer, Jeff Coleman. Well, this is one of my favorite uh, shows, I think, that we've done. We've done, um, I think, close to 40 now State of Independence programs. And the reason it was so special um, is because it conveyed the kind of humility that we try to encourage in the public debate and discourse. We say civility is code sometimes for people say being nice, but it really isn't that. It is putting others in front of you and then thinking about why do we have communications? And I love what you, you the exchange with both of you, kind of why do we communicate? And our words are to be used for, for healing and mending and um, very, very useful. Because I know everyone at some point in their life is going to be asked to speak in front of an audience. And I know there were people today taking notes down to say, just speak slowly. And yeah. I'm going to try, I'm going to try yeah. to speak a little more slowly. Are you going to try that? Yeah, well, yeah. maybe. Maybe we, I speak too quickly as we, it is. We, get, we pick I up speed sometimes, yeah, don't we? Yeah. 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 Uh, but, but I thought it was very practical. That's amazing how God is able to use all of us, isn't it? I mean, and God is able to use our perceived weaknesses for Not in glory. spite of either. That's, like, correct. That's correct. Actually right. using right. them. I mean, God used Moses. Imagine Moses having right. this stuttering problem and not really wanting to speak before people and, and wanted to use his, push his brother out front to, to speak so that he wouldn't be embarrassed. Yeah. And it met, God used us. And here's Jerry McDermott, you know, this, this incredible Who can man. be very intimidating, you think. If you, if you read his resume before you met him, you could be very intimidated and feel I'm completely inadequate to have a, to hold a conversation with a guy with these degrees. That's correct. And That's with correct. this level of, yeah. uh, of learning and accomplishment. Yeah. But the fruits of God's spirit show in him. I mean, one yeah. of them is gentleness. You know, uh, I mean, he, gentle spirit, uh, a, a humble spirit, uh, humble enough to talk openly about his challenges. And uh, I just love the way he talked. I talked. I loved what he said about Joe Biden, President Biden, yeah. and how God is using him, and how God used even his stuttering weakness for His glory and purpose, yeah. by helping that young boy. Yeah, a lot of people leaning forward, saying, "Well, oh, there is somebody in my life who I probably should reconsider how I approach them in real life." Yeah. So I'm hoping that's the case. Yeah, me too. Me too. What what fear are you facing? Where are you learning to rely on God more in your daily life? What are the giants like stuttering or the anxiety that comes from speaking in public that keep you from loving your neighbor like you love yourself? I'd love to have your, your feedback on today's show. Send me a comment in the message box at joewatkins.org. I read every one of them and find them so very encouraging. This week, face your fears with confidence, knowing that God has never left you, even in your darkest moments. When fears are the loudest, He's right there with you. From America's first capital, Philadelphia, I'm Joe Watkins. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next week. I think that was a very, very useful show. Yeah. God bless Jerry McDermott. What a wonderful witness and testimony. Joe Watkins' State of Independence is a production of Lighthouse TV, positively different. Made possible in part because of the support of viewers like you.